Beers Law Lab, finding the concentration of a solution. My name is Andy. And my name is Justin. And we're in D period. So the purpose of this lab is to determine the concentration of cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate solution using spectrophotometry and Beer's Law. So some background about Beer's Law. Beer's Law states that uh, absorbance given by A is equal to A times B times C, where C is the concentration. Uh, given that pure water has an absorbance of zero, Absorbance is the amount of light absorbed by a solution and not transmitted through the solution. Um, a and B are just two constant. A is the extinction coefficient and B is the path length of the cubet. So be, um, through Beer's law, um, we can determine <clears throat> what we... <laughs> at known concentrations, we can measure the absorbance. And then given the absorbance of unknown concentration, we can determine the concentration of the unknown solution. Okay. So our hypothesis for this lab is the following. Since absorbance is directly proportional to concentration through Beer's law, measuring the absorbance of different concentrations of COCl2, H, uh, 6H2O solution should result in direct linear relationship. Using this linear relationship, the concentration of an unknown COCl2, 6H2O solution can be determined by taking its absorbance. So methods to determine the wavelength of maximum absorbance, we first created a 0.1 molar cobalt chloride solution, and then we blanked the spectrophotometer by using a cuvette filled with distilled water. We ran the spectrophotometer with a cuvette with 0.1 molar solution to obtain an absorbance versus wavelength spectrum graph, and we used this graph to determine the wavelength of maximum absorbance. So here's the spectrophotometer we used. You can see the hole where the cuvette goes. And we made sure that the transparent side is adjacent to the white arrow here. And here's the connection to the computer. And we also made sure to wipe the transparent sides of the cuvette before running each test. OK, methods continued. To determine the linear relationship of absorbance and concentration, we first diluted the 0 0.1 molar uh, COCl2 to various um, molarity shown here. Then we set the spectrophotometer to the wavelength of the maximum absorbance determined previously. At this wavelength, we measure the absorbance of the dilute solutions of different concentrations, as well as that of the 0 0.1 molar solution. Using the linear regression to determine the relationship between absorbance and concentration, we... yeah. <laughs> okay, and finally we determine the concentration of the unknown solution. We did this by first measuring its absorbance, and then we used the linear relationship establ established previously between absorbance and concentration to, uh, to determine the concentration of the unknown cobalt chloride solution. Okay. So the, um, at the beginning of the lab, we first calculated the amount of cobalt chloride hexahydrate needed to make 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar solution. And and here's our data for the lab. First, we determined the mass. Or we f yeah, we determined the mass of COCl2 um, to be 2.3790 grams used. And then we um, found the wavelength of maximum absorbance to be 508.1 nanometers. Um, we we found the linear relationship, the absorbance of the unknown cobalt chloride solution, and finally the concentration of the unknown cobalt chloride solution was 0 0.04492 molar. So here is the uh, absorbance and wavelength graph. And so as you can see here, the maximum absorbance was at 508.1 nanometers. OK, and here's the data table um, showing the absorbances of various concentrations of cobalt chloride solutions we made. And finally, the graph of absorbance and con concentration, which is where Beer's law comes in. And as you can, s and here's our linear relationship. Uh, with this linear relationship, we determine the concentration of the cobalt unknown cobalt chloride solution to be around 0 0.04492 molar. Okay, so after. Analyzing the class data and dropping two of the outliers, we found that the mean concentration was 0 0.0455 molar and the standard deviation was 0 0.00295 molar. This is out of 24 trials. 
Um, we calculated the percent error from the mean was 1.27%, and this is slightly below the mean concentration. Our results of the 26 concentrations, um, two were outliers. The concentration of COCl2 solution should be around 0.0455 molar, which is the mean concentration we found previously. The standard deviation of 0.00295 molar is 6.5% of the mean, and this is relatively small, so uh, we can conclude that our data was relatively precise. Um, our concentration of 0.04492 has a 1.27% error. Um, disregard the negative sign shown here. That's an error uh, from the mean, and so that means our data was relatively accurate because that's a small percent error. Okay. So we were able to determine, to obtain a very good direct linear relationship of absorbance and concentration. Um, and this shows how Beer's Law was successfully used. The direct relationship was then used to determine the concentration of unknown cobalt chloride solution by taking its absorbance. And the concentration was determined to very good accuracy of 1.27% error and with only two outliers and a relatively low standard deviation, our tests were also relatively precise. So this means that in general, our results were what we expected and our lab was very suc successful. Okay, so error analysis. A couple um, factors that could have caused our errors were um, residual water in the cuvette from rinsing the cuvette, um, and this would have decreased the concentration and absorbance of the solution or the mass of the CO-CO2-6H2O used was slightly less than the mass needed for the 0.1 molar solution. Um, this would decrease the actual concentrations of our solutions. This would also make the unknown solution appear more concentrated than it actually was. And some other sources of error could have been forgetting to wipe cu uh, the cuvette, and that would have increased the absorbance, and that would have also increased the concentration measured. Okay, so in conclusion, we derived a direct linear relationship between absorbance and concentration and then we use this to determine the concentration of the cobalt chloride solution to be 0 0.04492 molar with good accuracy to the mean of 0 0.0455 molar. So in the future we might repeat this experiment with clear solutions like sodium chloride to see if Beer's law applies to clear solutions as well. And we might also try more concentrated or more dilute solutions to see if they also follow Beer's law. And so here's the color wheel and how it relates to absorption and reflection. Um, the CoCl2 solution was red, and so there, that means the maximum absorbance at, uh, was at green, which is the opposite color on the um, color wheel. And the lowest absorbance was at red, which is the color of the solution. Um, this is because our eyes see what the color, um, we see what color is reflected from the solution, meaning that red was actually not really absorbed and green was the color that was absorbed the most. So accordingly, blue solution would have maximum absorption at orange uh, wavelengths and yellow solutions would have maximum absorption at purple wavelengths. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah.